Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I begin with today's session, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then you can join the Telegram group. The link is in the description below. We provide the free PDFs of these sessions on that very group. Now, rather than starting with the first question, I want to tell you that in today's session, we'll be discussing about the PCA framework, which has recently been released by RBI for the NBFCs. So entire session today will cover the PCA framework for NBFCs. And at the end, we have some questions related to this. Okay, so rather than starting with the first question, today we'll start with the discussion of the topic. And at the last, we'll have some questions to assess your understanding about this topic. So let's start talking about the PCA framework. PCA stands for the Prompt Corrective Action Framework. What is this framework all about? It basically focuses on intervening beforehand uh, basically having a supervisory intervention over the financial entities like banks, NBFCs beforehand only so that their financial position does not deteriorate even more. So when we see that the financial health of the banks, of the NBFCs is not that very good, so if the timely actions are taken, then it will prevent their situation from deteriorating further. So if we see that a lot of loans of these banks are turning out to be NPAs or the banks are not maintaining enough capital and soon they might face a major financial crunch. So beforehand only RBI will intervene, it will put certain restrictions on these banks, on these entities and it will make sure that they come back on the track. Okay, so that is what the PCA framework is all about. Prompt corrective action. Timely corrective action le liya jaye taaki situation jo hai ya jo position hai us NBFC ki, us bank ki wo aur further kharaab na ho. So the objective is to ensure supervisory intervention at appropriate time and require the supervised entity to initiate and implement remedial, remedial measures in a timely manner. manner. So jab position kharaab ho rahi hai to pehle hi timely aap measures le lo taaki unki health restore hoi or further deteriorate now. That is the PCA framework's objective. So for banks, this framework is already existing. Okay, the PCA framework for the scheduled commercial banks was introduced in 2002. And from time to time, it has been reviewed, it has been updated. And the most recent updation was done recently when in the month of November I discussed about the revised PCA framework for the banks. Recently RBI had a revised framework for the banks. We also had a different session where it was discussed in detail. Mein. Now what RBI has done? Now it has issued the PCA framework for the NBFCs. So RBI has seen that NBFCs play a major role play in the economy. Mein. और इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए उन्हें ये लगा कि इसको भी प्रॉपर सुपरवाइजरी फ्रेमवर्क के अंडर रखना जरूरी है इसका सुपरविजन और बेटर करना जरूरी है दैट्स व्हाई आरबीआई टुक दिस डिसीजन टू इंप्लीमेंट द पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क टू द एनबीएफसीज एज वेल सो दिस फ्रेमवर्क विल बी एप्लीकेबल ऑन द एनबीएफसीज फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट ईयर ऑनवर्ड्स फ्रॉम अक्टूबर 2022 onwards based on whatever is the position of the NBFCs in March next year. So October 2020 say ye framework NBFCs be implement kar diya chayega. Why this framework has been introduced? See, NBFCs have a lot of linkages with our banks or with the overall financial system. Okay, they are growing in size. The role they play in the economy is increasing. Where the banks cannot cater to the financial needs, the NBFCs play a major role. So NBFCs have been growing and they have a lot of interconnectedness with other segments of the financial system. They are related with various other financial institutions. The major role they play in rendering the financial services. So that's why it's important that the PCA framework is applicable to NBFCs also so that we can actually strengthen the supervision of these entities. Okay, inki supervision better ho, inki health, jab financial health kharaab ho rahi hai, timely action liya jaye taki inki situation bhi achhi rahe. They continue to function in a good manner. That's the basic objective behind 
imposing the PCA framework on the NBFCs as well. Now talking about the PCA framework. Okay, so let's discuss about this framework in detail. अभी तक हमने discuss किया कि PCA framework क्या होता है, किन entities पे ये existingly अभी तक applicable था और अब NBFCs पे इसको क्यों apply किया गया है. Now talking about this framework in detail. So the first thing we must know is the applicability. कौन सी NBFCs पे ये framework applicable होगा? So if I talk about the applicability this framework is applicable to all deposit taking NBFCs except government companies. So, jitni bhi deposit accept karne wali NBFCs hain except the government companies, this framework is applicable to them. Then it is also applicable to all the non-deposit taking NBFCs in middle, upper and top layer. So, jitni bhi NBFCs hain middle, top or up layer mein scale, under the scale based framework of NBFCs we discuss about middle, upper and top layer NBFCs. So all non-deposit taking NBFCs in these layers like your investment and credit companies, your co-investment companies, your infrastructure debt funds, your infrastructure finance companies, your microfinance institutions, all these, to all these types of NBFCs, this framework will be applicable. But there are certain NBFCs which have been excluded from this framework. In NBFCs, pe ye framework apply nahi karega. They include NBFCs which are not accepting the public funds, then the government companies, the primary dealers and the housing finance companies. So, these four categories are in which framework applicable nahi hoga. Now, talking about the various parameters through which we assess the financial position of the NBFCs. What parameters we will see from which we will know the NBFCs ki financial health ka pata lagega. And under those parameters, what are the indicators which we will be used to assess the performance? So, suppose there is a certain parameter. Now, how we will be assessing that parameter? It will be through some kind of an indicator. So, let's discuss those parameters and indicators now. So, firstly, talking about the deposit-taking NBFCs and the non-deposit-taking NBFCs except the core investment companies. Core investment companies ke liye ek alag parameter or indicators hain. Baaki deposit taking or non-deposit taking NBFCs ke liye kaun si parameters hain. Pehle ye discuss kar lete hain. So for NBFCs deposit taking and non-deposit taking, two parameters will be assessed. The capital and the asset quality. So how much capital are these NBFCs maintaining? And then what is the quality of their assets? <coughs> Are lot of their loans turning out to be NPAs or they are good quality assets that will be assessed. So through which indicators we will be assessing it? First of all, we will be assessing the capital to, through the capital to risk weighted assets ratio. So we will be using the capital adequacy ratio to assess whether the banks are maintaining enough capital or not. Here we check, uh, not banks, the NBFCs are maintaining enough capital or not. So here we check how much capital is being maintained by the NBFCs against the risk weighted assets. Then talking about the next indicator of capital which is tier 1 capital ratio. So here we assess how much of the core capital is being maintained against the risky assets by the NBFCs. And third indicator for, the, for checking the asset quality is the net NPA ratio. So, how much are your NPAs against whatever advances you have actually given? Now, talking about the core investment companies. When I talk about the core investment companies, they are also a kind of NBFC. And what do they deal in? They basically focus on the business of acquiring the shares, acquiring the securities, subject to certain conditions. So, basically, core business in ka investment karna hai, securities, shares acquire karna hai, vesi NBFCs core investment companies hai. For them, capital is, a capital is a parameter to be assessed, asset quality is also a parameter to be assessed, but we have one additional parameter that is to assess the leverage levels how leveraged you are okay so for capital here instead of using these two ratios we assess the capital levels through the adjusted net worth or the aggregate risk weighted assets so by adjusted net worth i mean how much is the uh, how much is the level of the owned funds okay to that certain additions and reductions are made so in how it is calculated you can um, 
search about it in on google and you will get the link to the rbi website where the entire calculation is being discussed i'll also add that thing in the document which i'll be preparing now talking about the asset quality so that is assessed through nnpa and the leverage level is assessed through the leverage ratio the leverage ratio basically tells how much of the core capital are you maintaining against the total consolidated assets which you have okay now coming to the next thing that, that is the risk thresholds abhi tak humne discuss kiya ki kya kya major parameters hain jiske through hum ndfcs ki performance assess karenge aur us performance ko assess karne ke liye hum kya kya indicators use karenge now we will talk about the risk thresholds ki isse kam agar aapki capital hai ya isse zyada agar aapke npas hai तो आप पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क के अंडर आओगे और आरबीआई आपके अगेंस्ट मेजर एक्शंस लेगा और आप पे रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लगाएगा सो इफ यू आर ब्रीचिंग एनी ऑफ दीज रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड इफ यू आर नॉट मेंटेनिंग इनफ कैपिटल एज रिक्वायर्ड इफ यू आर हैविंग अ लॉट मोर एनपीएस देन व्हाट इज अलाउड देन आरबीआई विल पुट यू एज अ एनडीएफसी अंडर द पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क एंड इट विल इंपोज अ लॉट ऑफ रिस्ट्रिक्शंस ऑन यू सो First of all, we will be discussing the risk threshold for the deposit-taking and non-deposit-taking NBFCs, except your core investment companies. So, uh, let's discuss the risk thresholds as far as the CRAR indicator is concerned. So, आपको कुछ capital adequacy ratio maintain करना होता है. Current requirement NBFCs के लिए है कि 15% maintain करें. So, अगर वो इससे कम maintain करेंगी, तो उन्हें RBI के PCA framework के अंडर रख दिया जाएगा अगर एम इतना भी मेंटेन नहीं कर पा रही मतलब वो रिस्की है और उनको फिर एक्शंस लेने उनके अगेंस्ट आर को एक्शंस लेने पड़ेंगे ताकि उनकी परफॉर्मेंस हम वापस ट्रैक पे ला सकें सो इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू अडियर टू दिस 15% परसेंट स्टैंडर्ड और वट एवर इज दी करेंट रिक्वायरमेंट देन आर बी आई विल इम्पोज सम रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन यू सो हाउ मच इज द रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन it is up to 300 basis point below the regulatory minimum so if regulatory minimum is say 15% then if you are maintaining up to 3 basis point below it by 300 basis point below it by 300 basis points i means i mean 3% below it then you will be under risk threshold 1 so agar 15% ki minimum requirement hai agar aap usse 3% kam tak maintain kar rahe ho to matlab aap risk threshold 1 mein ho यानी कि 12 से 15 परसेंट के बीच अगर आपका सी आर ए आर है तो देन रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन टू इज मोर देन 300 बेसिस पॉइंट बट अप टू 600 बेसिस पॉइंट्स बिलो द मिनिमम सो मिनिमम इज 15 परसेंट ओके अगर आप उसमें 300 बेसिस पॉइंट से ज़्यादा और 600 बेसिस पॉइंट से कम इस लेवल कम मेंटेन कर रहे हो तो आप रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड टू में हो यानी कि अगर पंद्रह है तो थ्री बेसिस पॉइंट्स मीन्स ट्वेल्व से ज़्यादा बट 600 बेसिस पॉइंट बिलो मिनिमम 600 बेसिस पॉइंट्स मीन्स 6 परसेंट यानी कि 9 परसेंट आया ओके 15 माइनस सिक्स इज 9 परसेंट सो इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट बिटवीन 9 टू 12 दैट मीन्स यू आर अंडर द रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड टू एंड इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग एट एट मोर देन 600 परसेंट बिलो द रेगुलेटिव मिनिमम 600 बेसिस पॉइंट दैट मीन्स मोर देन सिक्स परसेंट बिलो द रेगुलेटिव मिनिमम दैट इज इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट एट लेस देन नाइन परसेंट देन यू आर इन रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड थ्री सो ये सी आर ए आर की रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड हैं देन टॉकिंग अबाउट द टीयर वन कैपिटल रेशियो फॉर दैट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर डिफरेंट लाइक अप टू टू हंड्रेड बेसिस पॉइंट बिलो द रेगुलेटरी मिनिमम इन केस ऑफ रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन सो इफ टेन परसेंट इज द करेंट रिक्वायरमेंट देन इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट एट बिटवीन एट टू टेन दैट मीन्स यू आर अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड टू इट इज मोर देन टू हंड्रेड बेसिस पॉइंट्स दैट मीन्स मोर देन टू परसेंट बट अप टू फोर हंड्रेड बेसिस पॉइंट बिलो द रेगुलेटरी मिनिमम दैट मीन्स बिटवीन सिक्स टू एट परसेंट एंड रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड थ्री इज मोर देन फोर हंड्रेड बेसिस पॉइंट सो करेंट रिक्वायरमेंट इज इफ इट गोज लेस देन सिक्स परसेंट देन यू आर अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड थ्री सो ये आपकी रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड बताई गई हैं Now talking about the next indicator that is NNPA ratio. So जितने ज़्यादा आपके NPAs पी एस हैं उतनी ज़्यादा आपकी परफॉर्मेंस खराब हो रही है सो इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट एट बिटवीन सिक्स टू नाइन परसेंट दैट मीन्स यू आर अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन इफ़ यू आर एन पी एस राइज इवन फर्दर एंड यू मेंटेन इट बिटवीन नाइन टू ट्वेल्व देन यू आर अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड टू एंड इफ यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट एट मोर देन ट्वेल्व परसेंट देन यू आर अंडर रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड थ्री सो दिस वॉज फॉर एन बी एफ सी डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एंड नॉन डिपॉजिट टेकिंग अब हम डिस्कस कर लेते हैं कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनीज का उसमें थोड़े से डिफरेंसेस हैं उसके ऑब्वियसली पैरामीटर्स और इंडिकेटर्स अलग हैं तो उसमें थोड़ा डिफरेंस होगा 
so for that the capital is assessed through the asset adjusted net worth or the aggregate risk weighted assets so the current requirement is at 30% so if you are maintaining it at a rate below this then you will be under the breach of the pca framework okay so if you are maintaining it at up to 600 po basis points below the regulatory requirement then you will be under this threshold one yani ki agar aapko 30% maintain karna hai to usse 6% kam tak agar aap maintain kar rahe ho that means 24 se 30% to aap first threshold ko breach kar rahe ho if you are maintaining it at a lesser value which ranges between 600 basis point to 1200 basis points below the regulatory requirement then you are under risk threshold 2 yani ki agar 30% maintain karna hai to agar aap 18 se 24 ke reach kar rahe ho to aap second threshold ko bhi breach kar rahe ho and if it is more than 1200 basis points below that means 12% se bhi zyada kam aap maintain kar rahe ho yani ki 30% maintain karna hai to aap agar 18 se bhi kam kar rahe ho to aap risk threshold 3 breach kar rahe ho then talking about the leverage ratio so the more the leverage that means your position is deteriorating so if you are maintaining it at between 2.5 to 3 then you are under risk threshold 1 if between 3 to 3.5 then risk threshold 2 and if more than 3.5 then risk threshold 3 or nnpa ratio ki requirement same hai jaise ki baki nbfc's deposit taking or non deposit taking ki thi moving ahead now to the Exit from the PCA framework or withdrawal of restrictions. अगर आपकी position अच्छी नहीं है, आप in indicators में से किसी को भी breach कर रहे हो, आप उन्हें अधिरण नहीं कर रहे हो, तो RBI आप पे restrictions लगाएगा, आपके against कुछ कुछ actions लेगा, ताकि आपकी performance वापस track पे आ सके। अगर आप की performance को RBI assess करता है, तो उन्हें लगता है कि आपकी performance अब improve हो रही है, तो वो आपको PCA framework में जैसे लाया है, वैसे ही हटा भी सकता है। if your situation is improving, if RBI thinks that, okay, now you are having good amount of profitability, it is, your performance is more sustainable, then it can remove you from the PCA framework as well. So, RBI ke paas power hai after PCA, frame, PCA framework lagane ki bhi or remove karne ki bhi. If you are not breaching the risk thresholds for four continuous quarterly financial statements, then RBI can remove you from the PCA framework. And if it feels that your profitability is more sustainable, then also it can remove you from this framework. Okay, so what type of actions does RBI take? If you breach in thresholds, then RBI takes against what actions leta hai? Let's discuss those actions. There are some mandatory actions which are taken and then there are some discretionary actions which are taken. जो जरूर ही जरूर RBI लेगा वो mandatory actions है और need and wants के हिसाब से जब RBI decide करेगा तो वो discretionary actions है कि जरूरत है तो ले नहीं तो नहीं भी लेंगे so the mandatory actions which are taken if you breach the first risk threshold is first it will restrict you on the dividend distribution and remittance of profits so आप कितना dividend distribute कर सकते हो कि आप अपने profits remit कर सकते हो उन सब पे restrictions लगा दी जाएंगी secondly Promoters and shareholders to infuse capital and reduce the leverage. आपको कम leverage लेनी होगी और capital infuse करनी होगी. ऐसे type के actions RBI ले सकता है. Then RBI can also restrict you as an NBFC on issuing the guarantees or taking the contingent liabilities on behalf of the group companies. So ये कुछ mandatory actions हैं जो आप पे लिए जाएंगे अगर आप risk threshold one को breach कर रहे हो. Then if you are breaching the second risk threshold, then all these actions which are taken under the first breach of first risk threshold will be taken plus one additional action will be taken. So, पहले जो ये तीन restrictions लगाए गए थे ये तो लगेंगे ही अगर आप second risk threshold को breach कर रहे हो. इसके साथ साथ एक और mandatory action जो RBI impose करेगा वो है कि आपकी branch expansions पे भी restrictions लगा दिए जाएंगे. You cannot expand your business, expand your branches. Thirdly, if you are uh, not adhering to the risk threshold 3 then all the actions taken under risk threshold 1 and 2 will be applicable plus two more actions will be taken one is that rbi will impose restrictions on the capital expenditure which you will be incurring and it will be restri uh, restricting you from incurring more operating cost variable operating cost it will you have to reduce the cost levels so these are some mandatory actions which can be taken. अगर आप इस threshold breach कर रहे हो तो ये actions आप पे लिए जाएंगे. ये तो mandatory होगा. अब based on the situation और भी अलग-अलग strategy related, governance related, market risk related, credit risk related, HR related अलग-अलग type के actions लिए जा सकते हैं. 
So let's discuss some of these actions now. Now talking about special supervisory actions, आप पे RBI की supervision बढ़ जाएगी और वो कुछ decisions लेगा. जैसे कि आप पे ज़्यादा आपको आपके ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा inspection करेगा, आपके business को वो अगर आप अच्छा perform नहीं कर पा रहे हो, अपने loans वगैरह ये पे नहीं कर पा रहे हो, तो आपके against insolvency process execute कराएगा, या आपका amalgamation या reconstruction कराएगा. आप पे ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा scrutiny करेगा RBI. That's what is covered under special supervisory actions. So special monitoring monitoring meetings will be held timely. Special inspections of these NBFCs will be done. These NBFCs will be restricted and uh, form carrying uh, restricted in the form of getting an approval from RBI, getting certain kind of permissions from RBI. RBI might impose uh, insolvency action against you or it might ask you to resolve the matter through amalgamation, through reconstruction. Now talking about the strategy related actions which can be taken. So RBI can activate a recovery plan that has been approved by the supervisor. It might want that you change your business model. You It might review your short term strategies, your medium term plans. It might ask you to re-engineer your business, to restructure your operations. So these are some strategy related actions which can be taken. Now talking about the governance related actions or zada governance ko better karne ke liye bhi RBI alag alag actions le sakta hai. RBI keh sakta hai ki hum aapka board supersede karenge, aap in managers ko hatao, naye board ko appoint karo, inki compensation change karo. So governance improve karne ke liye bhi RBI bohat se actions le sakta hai. RBI might actively engage with NBFCs on different aspects. It might recommend the shareholders to bring in new management, new board remove certain managerial person, appoint new people, supersede the board, change the compensation. So, ye kuch governance related actions hain. Now, talking about some capital related actions. So, here some restrictions will be imposed on where you can invest your capital, how you can raise more capital. Okay, so you need to submit the plans to RBI if you want to raise some capital. You need to build up your reserve through the retained profits. You will be restricted on investing in various subsidiaries, investing in various, expanding in expanding your business by investing in various risk weighted assets, increasing your subsidiaries. So, you have to do different investments, capital invest, capital raise, and you have to restrictions on RBI. Then, talking about credit risk related actions. So, if you RBI see that your performance is not good, then you have to restrictions that you can't loans in sectors, you can't invest in sectors, you can't invest in sectors, you can't NPAs ke against aap aur provisions. Rakho. So, these are all credit risk related actions. Hai. Okay, uh, preparing the plans to reduce your NPAs, to stop your new NPAs from rising, reduce uh, giving loans in certain sectors, reduce your investment in certain sectors, increase the provisions you are maintaining for the NPAs. NPAs. These are the credit risk related actions. Now, let the market risk related actions. Mein. Market risk, if your position is not good, you don't need to take risk. Nahi leni so, RBI can restrict you on taking more borrowings, on investing your money which you have. Okay. Then is HR related actions. So, RBI can say that you don't have all staff ना हायर करो या एक्जिस्टिंग स्टाफ को ट्रेन करो ताकि वो बेटर वे में परफॉर्म कर सके सो रिस्ट्रिक्टिंग दी स्टाफ एक्सपेंशन ट्रेनिंग दी एक्जिस्टिंग स्टाफ दीस कैन बी सम एक्शंस व्हिच कैन बी टेकन now coming to the profitability related actions so rbi can restrict the capital expenditure which you can incur it might ask you to reduce your operating costs so these are some profitability related actions अब बात करते हैं कि आपके ऑपरेशंस पे क्या रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लगाए जा सकते हैं यू आर ऑपरेटिंग योर एनबीएफसी ओके सो वेरियस काइंड ऑफ रिस्ट्रिक्शंस कैन बी इंपोज्ड ऑन द ऑपरेशंस व्हिच यू कैन अंडरटेक आरबीआई कैन रिस्ट्रिक्ट यू ऑन एक्सपेंडिंग योर ब्रांचेस इट माइट रिस्ट्रिक्ट यू टू ओपन न्यू सब्सिडरीज टू एंटर इनटू न्यू बिजनेस न्यू बिजनेसेस आपको वो कह सकते हैं कि आप और रिस्की एसेट्स में इन्वेस्ट ना करो और लीवरेज ना लो अपनी एक्टिविटीज को आउटसोर्स ना करो न्यू बोरोइंग्स ना करो so these are restricting your operations. इसके अलावा RBI को कुछ और fit लगता है, कुछ और सही लगता है, तो वो actions भी RBI आपके against ले सकता है. If RBI needs some other actions need to be taken based on the situation, then it can take those actions as well. So ये सारा discussion हो गया हमारे PCA framework पे जो NBFCs पे implement होगा. काफी हद तक ये banks वाले framework से similar है. 
जो इनके पैरामीटर्स हैं इंडिकेटर्स हैं उनकी रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड है वो थोड़ी बहुत डिफर करती हैं ऑब्वियसली सो नाउ कमिंग टू द क्वेश्चन अगर आपको ये पूरा समझ आ गया है आपको ये जो रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वगैरह हैं वो याद हैं तो आप इजिली अब इन्हें आंसर कर पाओगे सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन से इस आर बी आई हैज़ नाउ इशूड द पी सी ए फ्रेमवर्क फॉर दी एन बी एफ सीज दिस इज एप्लीकेबल टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैटेगरी ऑफ एन बी एफ सीज सो किन एन बी एफ सीज को ये एप्लीकेबल है डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एन बी एफ सीज एक्सक्लूडिंग गवर्नमेंट कंपनीज येस कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनीज एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंस कंपनीज येस गवर्नमेंट कंपनी प्राइमरी डीलर्स एंड हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज नो ये एक्सेप्शन है सो फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड आर करेक्ट दैट्स वाई आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी Now coming to the second question, which of the following is incorrect regarding the PCA framework for NBFCs? So सो अभी जो ये फ्रेमवर्क आया है उससे रिलेटेड कौन सी स्टेटमेंट इन करेक्ट है सो दिस फ्रेमवर्क विल बी एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ऑनवर्ड्स इट इज करेक्ट कैपिटल लीवरेज एंड एसेट क्वालिटी आर द पैरामीटर्स फॉर एन बी एफ सीज डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एंड नॉन डिपॉजिट टेकिंग नो लीवरेज इज नॉट एन इंडिकेटर इट इज फॉर दी कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनीज Asset quality is one of the various parameters of CICs. For investment companies के ये तीनों indicator है उनमें से asset quality एक indicator है ये भी correct है So only second is incorrect. Answer is option B. Now coming to the third question, which of the following is an asset quality indicator for NBFCs deposit taking and non-deposit taking? So asset quality हम कैसे assess करते हैं एन एन पी ए रेशियो से राइट सो ये सब हमारे कैपिटल असेस करने के रेशियो है ये लीवरेज का है एन एन पी एस दी असेट क्वालिटी इंडिकेटर आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई नाउ कमिंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट अबाउट ट्रिगर पॉइंट्स अंडर पी सी ए फ्रेमवर्क फॉर डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एंड नॉन डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एन बी एफ सी इनमें से कौन से रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड सही मैंशन है यहाँ सो फर्स्ट इज दैट रिस्क थ्रेश होल्ड वन इन केस ऑफ ब्रीच ऑफ सी आर ए आर इज हैविंग इट more than 300 basis points but up to 600 basis points below regulatory minimum no it was just 300 basis point below the regulatory minimum so it is incorrect second one says the risk threshold 3 for breach of tier 1 capital is having it at more than 400 basis points below the regulatory minimum ye correct hai third one says risk threshold 3 in case of breach of npa is having it at more than 9% no having it at more than 12% so this is also incorrect कौन सी सही है ये बतानी है सिर्फ सेकंड सही है आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए दिस वाज ऑल फॉर टुडेज सेशन विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू एंड अप दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच